Hi everyone, I'm Adam Steele, and in today's video, we're going to talk about IRs, impulse responses, in the context of getting a guitar tone through a virtual cabinet, and how to make something like that. But first, in this video, we're going to talk about what an impulse response is, and what we can use it for. First, let's break down what the name means. It's in two parts. Firstly, impulse. That's a very short, sharp noise. A perfect click, a transient. First it's there, then it's gone. Secondly, the part response. That's the bit we're looking for. Here's an example. If you stand in a cathedral and you clap, does it sound like a click? No, it goes Your clap is the first part, the impulse, and the rest of that sound is the response. In that way, this is a great way to capture the reverb of a room. Generally, you take the best speaker you can find to make a perfect impulse, or something like a, a starting gun, they make a very good impulse, and you take the most linear microphone you have, place them a certain distance apart, and the resulting recording is a capture of the sound of that room reverb, in so much as it's a capture of that exact microphone placement, just as if you were in that room yourself moving around would make you hear quite different variations on that reverb. From there, how do we get that recording to be something that we can use? That's where we take that recording as a file, trimmed so that it starts at the bang and ends when the reverb has reasonably finished, and we use a technique called convolution. Convolution, put simply, is where we take one source and process it through the lens of another source. In our case, this means taking a dry sound source, let's say a vocal with no reverb, and we process it through that file that we made. The specifics of how convolution does this are maths that's a bit over my head, but suffice to say, it works. Going back to what I said earlier about the perfect speaker and the ideal microphone, these are great for capturing the essence of a room without adding any external influence, but what if you like the sound of a particular microphone? Say, recording that room through a Neumann U87 and a vintage preamp like a, a Neve 1073? Yes, that's perfectly possible, and the sonic character of the microphone and preamp then become part of that recording that you made. The same goes for the speaker. If you change it from something as close to perfect as possible to something with considerably more character, then that becomes a part of the sound as well. At some point, somebody figured out that by changing the speaker and the microphone, a lot of what they were now hearing was those characters rather than the room itself. If you could capture the sound of a speaker and a mic, why not capture a guitar cabinet with a commonly used mic, such as the good old SM57? As such, the idea of the virtual cabinet has become quite a common thing. However, using this impulse method, there's a problem. Because the aim in this scenario is to capture the speaker cabinet more than the room, the reverb time is very short. And so, when you send that impulse out of a speaker cabinet, you don't get a great deal of detail captured. To get around this, we use a method called a sweep. What's a sweep? We'll tell you after we talk about Patreon. Patreon is the platform you can use to support creators like us, as we make content to entertain and educate people around the world. We take a lot of time out of recording in the studio to make these videos, and you guys are helping us to keep the lights on and keep the wheels turning. If you support us from as little as a, a dollar a month, you can get access to videos like this before anybody else, and direct access to ask us questions to get to the top of the list on our viewers comments videos and our regular podcasts. To those who already support us as patrons, we are incredibly grateful, so thank you. On with the show. So, sweeps. If you've ever heard an impulse capture, it likely doesn't sound like this. It sounds more like 
this. So what's happening here? Well, at some point, someone worked out that rooms, or in fact speakers, resonate differently at different frequencies. And that's why impulse responses behave the way they do. Now, an impulse, when you look at it on a graph, is representative of a white noise pulse. This is important because in terms of the maths, white noise contains every frequency with equal power. That is to say, it's supposed to be representing every frequency we can hear all at once. The problem here is that this pulse is just too short in the instance of the guitar cabinet example for the capturing device to gather enough detail to make a realistic representation of the sound that you're trying to capture. In my experience, these captures end up sounding muddy and very unlike the real deal. That seems to be because guitar speakers act very differently at different frequencies and trying to force them all through at once doesn't give the speaker the time it needs to buckle and bend and react like it would in a real world performance. Enter the sine wave sweep. What we figured out is that if you need the environment to change over time, but you also need to use every frequency we can hear, you can use a sine wave sweep that goes across the entire human hearing spectrum, usually from 20 hertz up to 20 kilohertz and beyond. We can choose how long we want this sine wave sweep to go on for, depending on a balance of how much detail we need and how long we're prepared to put up with this horrible drone before we go insane. Generally, when I'm making sweep captures, I choose between 30 and 60 seconds. That may be far more than it's actually needed, but when I've worked with other companies on captures, their defaults all seem to be 30 or 60 seconds, so I'm not going to argue. It works well, so I'll stick with that. Once you've sent one of these sine wave sweeps through your gear to capture the tone you were looking for, you then have to convert that back into an impulse response by way of a process called deconvolution. There are programs that exist such as Deconvolver by Voxengo. You feed the original sine wave sweep in one side, the capture that you made into the other, push a few buttons, and there you have it. An IR pops out at the end. In terms of full details, we're going to do a separate video on capturing a guitar cab IR right after this video, so check in the description for a link if that's what you're interested in doing yourself. So to round this out, the impulse response that we have, whether it be one you've made yourself or one you've downloaded from the internet, you have to find a way to use it. Enter the IR loader. There are a lot of different software solutions for this. The ones I usually use are Recabinet by Kazrog, Reaper's inbuilt loader called Reverb, although there really are more out there than you can imagine. It's also possible to load these IR files into hardware units like the Two Notes Torpedo Range, or the Axe Effects, the Helix, or a whole host of other external effects processors. You can use a virtual guitar amp into one of these IRs, or you can use a real amp using a load box, or some combination all your own. It's up to you. I hope you found this exploration of IRs interesting and useful. There's always more to it, and we may do a follow-up on the limitations of IRs and what companies are doing to try and get around those limits, but for the meantime, our next video on the topic is going to be us walking you through how to actually capture a guitar cab IR with a real amp, a real cabinet, and an audio interface, step by step. For now though, thanks so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed it, and as such, it would be amazing if you subscribe to the channel and hit that like button. It really helps us more than I can explain. Thanks again. I've been Adam Steele for Hot Pole Studios, and I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye. Thanks for watching guys. If you enjoyed this, feel free to check out our other videos as you can find here, or check out our Facebook and Twitter, or our Patreon page, which helps us to make more videos like this. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video.